Good morning. This is day eight of our trip, Tuesday, June 5th. It's uh, about 11.15 mountain time. Uh, we just pulled out of uh, the Pocatello KOA about five, ten minutes ago. We're on Interstate 15 going north for about 40 miles, and then we're going to pick up U.S. Highway 20, which will take us into West Yellowstone, Montana. It's definitely cooler today. Had to sleep under the blankets last night. Um, skies are still clear, though, which is good. 60 degrees, according to the sign that's on the side of the road. And that's about what it feels like. It was definitely in the 50s this morning. And I think it's going to stay this way for the next week or so, where we're headed. Uh, I wasn't able to post or upload the video from yesterday because the internet connection at the campground was very slow. So hopefully I'll have uh, a higher speed connection uh, at the next campground and I'll post yesterday's video uh, later on today. We got off to a late start this morning, woke up a little bit later than usual. So we landed didn't have a chance to make lunch before we left. So we'll be stopping along the road and she'll have to make lunch uh, uh, at the rest stop this time. We'll film more. Okay, down the road. it's 12.35. We're about halfway to West Yellowstone. We've got about 80 miles to go. <clears throat> we stopped off on the side of US Highway 20 at a Quality Inn, which has a spacious, empty parking lot. And uh, so we stopped here for a bathroom break and for lunch before hitting the road again. Still cool, I'd say still about 60 with the breeze blowing. I think I'm going to go in and put my pants on and uh, <clears throat> get ready for cooler weather. So that's all from here. We'll film more once we get uh, either to the campground or if we see something interesting along the way. Okay, we're heading north on Highway 20, 45 miles from West Yellowstone. And uh, the road signs say uh, bad road. And they aren't kidding. We're getting bounced around a little bit. But other than that, so far so well, good. Greetings from West Yellowstone, Montana at the Rustic Wagon RV Park. And uh, we got here just before 3 o'clock um, under sunny skies and a wind. Now I see that the uh, thunderstorms are in the area. It's 60 degrees up here, and uh, tourist season hasn't quite started yet. Uh, June 15th, they said, is when the place will start to pick up. So uh, we're going to beat that by about a week. So the park, like I said, is practically empty. Uh, they're just now getting things ready for the season. I see a few raindrops are just starting to fall. The park is anything special to look at. Town is pretty small. I went to the bank to get some cash and right next to the bank was this beautiful RV park, brand new. I didn't even know, I didn't even find it on the internet. But this place will do us just fine. We're nine blocks from the uh, from the entrance to the park. And uh, I've got to pull around. I have to park the truck behind the trailer. You can see us over there. The drive here was again uneventful, predominantly flat, although we're high elevation. Um, this is 65, almost 6,600 foot elevation here in West Yellowstone. And uh, it didn't seem like we climbed that much uh, from Pocatello, but I guess we did. So anyhow, we're all here, uh, safe and sound, I've got the small awnings out. Not going to take out the big awning or the flags. The weather's too unpredictable. And uh, we'll probably go without the big awning uh, for the duration of our stay here. Um, so everything is good. There's a couple of nice restaurants in town. And uh, I'm going to see what Elena wants to do. Maybe we'll go in to town and have a nice dinner. Or maybe I'll fire up the barbecue. I think in about 30 minutes I'll know what the weather is going to do is going to do and that may dictate our plans as well. I forgot to mention too that uh, gas here in town is 393 a gallon 
which is uh, still cheaper than in California, so I won't complain. And we averaged 9.1, 9.2 miles an hour uh, coming up here, and again, the wind was pushing us, helping us along pretty much the whole way. All right, well, we finally made it to our primary destination on this trip, which was Yellowstone National Park. We took our sweet time getting here. Finally, on the eighth day of travel, we arrived. I haven't totaled the, uh, the exact mileage on how long it was to get here, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand miles. And uh, we've enjoyed it so far. Trip's been kind of slow in terms of activity level. Going, you know, stop a night here, a night there. Salt Lake City, we had a couple of interesting things there. And now we've got uh, four full days here in Yellowstone National Park. The weather, the weather outside is frightful. Uh, wind is blowing, it's getting colder by the minute out there. That cold front clearly is coming through. It's cloudy. Um, feels like it's going to snow, but I know it won't. Although it's happened to us before. But uh, it's going to be a cold one tonight, probably down to 30. And uh, tomorrow, I think the rest of the, our stay here, we're going to have the same type of weather. Um, 60s in the high, a chance of rain, uh, 30s for the low, and I guess that's just your typical summer deal up here. Everybody is saying that the crowds are going to arrive starting on June 15th. So we're going to be getting our butts out of here just before the, the rush. So that's good. <clears throat> Went into town for dinner, uh, Three Bears Diner, not too bad, uh, Goldilocks was nowhere to be found. So anyhow, that's the story, we'll uh, I'm sure be posting lots more interesting pictures and videos starting tomorrow. We have yet to decide what loop we're going to take tomorrow in, in the park, either the northern loop or the southern loop, but we're going to do one of those two, and I guess you'll just have to wait and find out. Uh, as to which one it is that we're going to take tomorrow. So that being said, we'll, we'll tell you. Well, good morning. It's 7 o'clock on June the 6th in the morning. And uh, we woke up and looky what we found. Uh, just a slight little dusting of snow overnight. So uh, second year in a row now we've been snowed on a little bit. We had some in Grand Canyon last year and uh, now we have it this year in Yellowstone. Two days ago it was almost 100 degrees in Salt Lake City. The truck got a little bit of it too I see. Anyhow, um, this won't last. I have to check the weather report but surely this won't last and uh, we'll go ahead and get ready to uh, get our breakfast and then uh, hit the road for okay, the park. Okay, here we are, June 6th, 1115 Mountain Time. And as you can see, snow flurries, but nothing is sticking to the ground. We came, traveled the nine blocks from the RV park to the uh, west entrance of Yellowstone. So we're gonna go in and uh, figure out what loop we're going to okay, take. We've decided we're going to take the north loop today. Uh, better, better viewing, they said, given the conditions. Although the weather is supposed to improve as the day goes on. Okay, here's our first stop, Terrace Springs. And uh, the hot steam feels good. The, blow, the wind is blowing right into the camera, right into our face. But uh, take, a, take a shot around. And the weather, hopefully, skies are going to start to clear a little bit, hopefully. And there's Elena with Buddy. With young this is the Gibbons Fall. And you can see the river down below into the nice uh, valley, meandering through the valley. Beautiful scenery. Okay, we stopped off at the side of the road. This looks like, the, I think, the Barrel Spring. And it definitely smells like sulfur. And I know this is just a small piece of what we're going to see a little bit later. Very interesting. This is the Norris Geyser Basin. We're going to take a walk down on the boardwalk through there. We're at the Norris Geyser Basin. 
and Elaine is trying to feel the heat. She doesn't feel it. All I know is my fingers are going numb. Wind is blowing, unfortunately. You could hear the ground bubbling, and it smells like sulfur. Here's a quick shot of Roaring Mountain. Well, we have a buffalo sighting, other than myself. Or a bison, I guess. Elena says it's a bison. Just off by the side of the road. Okay, we're approaching the northern end of the park, uh, making our way towards Gardner, Montana. And this is off pretty high country up here. I'm just doing a quick 360, panning around. Rough weather up here. Wind blowing awful hard, probably not even going to be able to hear me speaking into this microphone. Topography and how they built the road on the side. There's another geothermal feature, uh, a geothermal, geothermal waterfall at the north end of the park near Gardner, Montana. Near Mammoth Big Springs, which I think is where we're okay, here we are in Gardner, Montana. We made it to the north entrance. And uh, I made this trip out here because I wanted to take a picture of the Roosevelt Gate. Which is right here. And uh, this was dedicated by President uh, Teddy Roosevelt. I forget the exact year. And of course the park was created. 1872. So we came and we got a picture of it. Elaine and I took a couple of pictures uh, standing underneath it. I don't know how we're going to see ourselves. But, uh, nevertheless, we got it. So now we're going to get in the truck again after Buddy does his business. And we're going to head over towards the, uh, I think, Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. We're going to take the eastern portion of the North Loop. Hopefully we'll be back in West Yellowstone by 6 o'clock. Okay, we're inside the car. And we see a, a pair of, I'm not sure what those are. They're not deer. I don't think they're deer. And they're not moose. I'm not too hip on what the animals are. But anyhow, the way we saw them grazing on the way down to Gardner, and now it seems their bellies are full and they're they taking a nap. Deers. White tailed deer. Elena thinks they're white tailed deer. I don't know. That, that thing has a white tail. So white behind. I defer to her judgment on that one. What is that? You know, There's another picture of a couple of them moving. White tail, I don't know. Perhaps, I don't think they're deer, but I don't know what they are. Antelope, maybe? No, no, I don't, I don't know. Anyhow. That's what I'm saying, we need to get closer. They like airstreams, There's, they're near an airstream trailer. Anyhow, all right, well, we've got enough hey, of them for now. up here on the black tail Deer Plateau, and I'm just giving a panoramic shot. Wind always picks up when I go to film. Um, it's still a very, very impressive sight. And uh, this is the Cactus Springs Overlook.
Tower Falls. Alright, we're up near Mount Washburn. I think it's the highest point in the park, at least by, by paved road. And we're panning around the high country here, upwards of 9,000 feet elevation. I think the peaks are around 10,000 feet. Beautiful. Okay, we're at the Dunraven Summit doing a full 360, 88, almost 8,900 feet in elevation. And look at the beauty out there. That off in the distance looks like the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. And I think that's where we're headed next. I think the road is going to take us that direction. Driven 100 miles so far today. Here's the uh, upper fall, I believe, of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Here's the view of the lower falls from the lookout. Beautiful. That trail must be closed, but there's not anybody on it. That trail, that's one, he that's one heck of a hike down there. And here's the canyon. There's the canyon. More of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Elena's here with me, taking a full panorama. Falls is obstructed. There's the fall with that trail down there. Beautiful. Inspiration point at the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone just downstream from the lower falls. <laughs> there they are. Finally. Finally a shot of some... I got the high-powered video. That might be an elk. I think it's an elk. It's 535. We're headed back to the trailer. Should be there. And the GPS says should be there by 620. We had a long day today. Tomorrow's loop may be even longer. But we had a good time. And uh, Buddy is sufficiently exhausted. So we'll get back to the trailer, decide what we're going to do for dinner, and then uh, call it a day and prepare for the lower loop tomorrow. Good morning. This is day 10, June the 7th. We're just back inside the boundary of the National Park, 1045. We got off to a slightly earlier start this morning. Elena's trying to kill a mosquito. I did. It was a big one. And she got it, it sounds like, so that made her day. And we're heading to the south loop and uh, we're going to see Old Faithful and other geysers in the geyser basin. The park ranger gave us a phone number to call uh, to check on approximate eruption times for the various geysers. So if we're lucky and we're in the right place at the right time, we might see something. Okay, well, we see more bison. There's a bunch of people parked on the side of the road. 
and it looks like they're there with their calves. Those are bison, baby bisons. Can we pan out a little bit? There's a whole bunch of them out here on this meadow. I can't show you the whole thing because the Elena sun visor is obstructing the view. But there's a whole herd of them out here. Just kind of resting, enjoying the warm, warmer day and the sun. Okay, well we're going to miss Old Faithful Geyser by about 15 minutes, so we're going to have to, we're killing some time in order to uh, catch it the next time around. All the other geysers aren't erupting until this evening. Alright, we're about 10 miles away from the Old Faithful Geyser, and we just pulled off by the side of the road to take this beautiful panorama with the, with the river running through it. Just gorgeous. Much prettier with the sun shining. Beautiful scenery. Okay, here we are again by the side of the road taking this beautiful uh, picture of this little valley. And there's a geyser basin off in the distance. It's not Old Faithful. You can see the steam coming up. There's some buffalo grazing off in the distance. I'm going to try to zoom in there. Paint pot geysers. That's a Celestine pool. These are uh, mud pots. Which is brew. This mud pot, much more active. Look at that. Again, the paint pot geyser basin. Taking a quick panoramic shot of it. There's the geyser itself. We'll get a closer look at it in just a second. This is a red spouter. Steam's blowing right into us. Ooh, here's the paint pot geyser. Erupting a little bit. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Correction, this is the spasm geyser, not the uh, paint pot. So I stand corrected. Look at that scenery. Beautiful, brilliant blue sky. And he landed the Midway Geyser Basin, and you can see the water coming down from the geyser into the river. Again, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. This is the Excelsior Geyser. Visibility is not too good. The wind is blowing the steam right into the camera. More panoramic views. So impressive. We're going to go up ahead there and see what that Here's looks like. Here's a better shot of the Excelsior. 1985 was the last time. In 1985 was the last time it actually blew its top. You can see the blue water in there, bubbling. Out of sight. Shot of the gradual flow of water meandering its way down to the Excelsior Crater. Here's the rest of the pan view. Looking around. We may not make it to Old Faithful by the time we're up. 
corpse again. But we're gonna try. Of course, we got two more days to see. Awesome. Okay, here's the upper part of the middle geyser, the Grand Prismatic Spring. I'm using the better quality camera to catch the color of these uh, bacterial beds, bacterial mats. Just gorgeous. Can't get enough of it. This is the Grand Prismatic Spring. And actually the steam is, is colored. Now I know why it has a name. You can see the different colors of the steam coming off of it. Gorgeous. These are bacterial mats. Biscuit Basin. There's an angler out there waiting in the river and uh, we just missed Old Faithful. It's erupting right now. It's 1245. So we'll try to, we're only a couple miles away from it. We'll try to hit it for the 215 uh, approximate time eruption. Again, beautiful. Look at the color of that water. Sapphire pool. This is the Shell Spring, right next to the boardwalk. Mustard Spring is putting on a little show for me. It just perked up as I was walking by. The geyser there is just erupting, and it just stopped. Interesting. Things just perk up and then slow right okay, down. Okay, this is the high point of Biscuit Basin. And there's a fall up there. And I forget the name of it already. I just read the damn sign. Mystic Falls. I'm zooming in for a close-up look at it. Trying to hold the camera still. Not having much success. I'm going to do a panorama of the basin. Boy, you just can't get enough of this scenery. More, more geysers and geothermal features in the foreground there. steam blowing across, the smell, the beauty. Can't beat it. And the weather is good today too. It's supposed to be a high of 65. And uh, I think we're in the 50s right now. We may just make it there. There it goes again. And it stopped. I guess if you're a fly fisherman, it doesn't get any better than this. And seeing that reminds me of my Uncle Jim Wisman. And being here in Biscuit Basin reminds me of Biscuits and Gravy, which was another one of Uncle Jim's favorites. I wish you were here. But not to be. But we're closing in on lunchtime, and that's why Biscuits and Gravy are on my mind. So, in memory of Uncle Jim, we're going to head for Old Faithful and grab some this lunch. This is the Black Sand Basin, last stop before Old Faithful. We're going to go in and take a look. We've got about 20 minutes before we have to get in the car. Got a little uh, bubbling activity here. 
This is the cliff geyser. Beautiful. But the river, Firehole River, I believe. Even the steam is blue up in the distance there and uh, rust colored, prismatic type of uh, steam. Gorgeous. This is the Emerald Pool. Okay, we're at the high point of the Black Sand Basin. And here's one of the pools. Pan around. A couple of uh, oysters. Elena in the picture. What do you think so far, Elena? Mm -hmm. nice. Have you have you seen anything else like it? Yeah. And over by the boardwalk, there's fumaroles. Gorgeous. Now we're going to head off to Old Faithful and catch the okay, next eruption. We're here at Old Faithful. We've got about a half an hour to wait. We're going to go ahead and have lunch. Here's some historic buildings. There's a lodge there. The great Old Faithful Inn over there, which we're going to go inside in a little bit and take some pictures of that. So we're just going to hang tight for now and wait for the uh, eruption. Old Faithful the geyser. Old Faithful the sandwich. <clears throat> Elena's, Elena's worried that uh, she's going to be underwhelmed by the performance. We're sitting here waiting patiently. Okay, I think we have it now. Well, finally. Don't zoom it, damn it. Just take the picture. I can crop it. Beautiful. Well, that was worth the wait. Look at that. Yeah, Old Faithful put on quite a show. Beautiful. for a pretty long time. so far.
I think it's pretty much done now. Yeah. You know what? How about you grab the red pillow? Alright, well. What would you think, Brendan? That was pretty cool. Good, Gala. Leave the dog alone. Okay. Come on. I think that's just about it. Okay, now that we've seen the geyser, now we're going to go in the Old Faithful Inn. Okay, we're inside the Old Faithful Inn. Buddy's a little nervous, big crowd in here. And of course this inn is famous for its architecture, of how it's constructed with the logs. And uh, even, the, even the ceiling is logged. They almost lost this in the big fire of 88. They were able to save it. There's a tour guide there giving some history about the building. And clearly it's under it's under renovation at the moment. Fun. It was like a tree house indoors. Right below the tree house. These windows are giving a lot of glare, but uh, here in, from the entrance of the dining room more pictures, interior shots of the Old Faithful Inn. Gorgeous. But it smells like pine saw in here. Guess where we're headed. Here's some shots from the third floor. The, ch the chimney and the fireplace are under renovation. I seem to have lost Elena and Buddy. I better go There's find the uh, Old Faithful viewing platform on the uh, front portico of the Old Faithful Inn. Pretty nice little setup here. Gorgeous building, rickety old place though. Not a, even not a level floor in the whole joint. Okay, we're preparing to leave the Old Faithful geyser area. Just doing a pan shot of the Old Faithful geyser and other related geysers, which we aren't going to go and see. We're starting to run short on time. It's already 3 o'clock, and we've only traveled 40 miles. So we're done for here. And then, of course, the Old Faithful Inn. We just came out of there. And now we're going to go get a quick refreshment. Here's the Old Faithful Lodge. We're going to get our ice cream here. Just a quick pan shot from the Old Faithful Lodge. Looking out on the Old Faithful Geyser and the Old Faithful Inn. This is the Montana Yellowstone Huckleberry Ice Cream. Ready to be developed. Here's the West Thumb Geyser Basin with Yellowstone Lake in the background. This looks like a much more subdued geyser basin than the others that we've seen elsewhere in the park. We're going to take the route down there and the abyss pools with the West Thumb Geyser Basin. And we're right near the edge of the lake. This is the Black Pool. to the lake. Here we are at the bank of the Yellowstone Lake and there's a uh, cone they called the Big Cone steaming vent and it uh, sticks right out of the lake shore. And a quick panorama of the beautiful blue water. Gorgeous. Here's another cone farther up on shore. From the this is cone. the fishing cone on the bank of Yellowstone Lake. It's uh, just submerged under the water. And we're 
to Lakeshore Geyser. Don't know how often it erupts though. One last look for, of Yellowstone Lake from the West Thumb Geyser Basin. Fantastic. That there is the Bluebell Pool and the Seismograph Spring. 167 degree water temperature. Here's your classic mud pot. Okay, here's a view heading, looking south, I believe, from across Yellowstone Lake. That could be the, the part of the Teton Range where we're headed on Sunday. I think Jackson is down in that southerly direction. But again, beautiful with the lake. Great scenery here. Very okay, peaceful. Well, home. we're at the far end of Yellowstone Lake, and I'm panning down towards the south. This is the far north tip of the lake. We're getting one last look of it, because we're not going to pass through here again, most likely. Taking a panoramic shot, and this is at the Lake Village area of the park. And out that direction is Cody, Wyoming. And behind us here is the Lake Hotel. Big place. I don't know much about this place. But it looks old and it looks like it's been here for a while. Yep, here's the Lake Yellowstone Hotel with a vintage 1930s uh, Yellowstone Tour coach. We saw it on the road yesterday, up in these parts, come to think of it. Beautiful old uh, Georgian, I guess, I don't know. Kind of reminds me of the Greenbrier a little bit, except that's yellow. And then off, there's Elena with Buddy. And Elena and Buddy are getting pretty tired. And she doesn't want me to be loitering. So we're going to head back to the truck, which is over there, and continue on. Okay, I just wanted to get a shot further up the bank of the lake, looking back on the West Thumb geothermal area. That's where we were a few miles back. And again, I'll panorama shot, pan around. Beautiful lake. You could probably, hopefully you could hear the water lapping on the shore. I'm standing right on the shore of the lake. Absolutely spectacular. This is the fishing bridge. This is where Yellowstone Lake turns into the Yellowstone River. And it looks like the water flows out from the lake, which makes sense. The falls are that way, so the, le the river must flow to the north towards Canada. A view of the Yellowstone River from the fishing bridge looking towards the north. And the falls and the canyon are 16 miles that direction. Hey bud. You ready to go back to the trailer? Huh? I think buddy's ready to go back. We've got a small family of bison here feeding right off the side of the road. You can see the little calf there. Two little calves. Three calves. Beautiful to be this close. They know we're here. They know we're minding our own business. Beautiful. Okay, this is the Sulphur Cauldron. We're heading northbound on the lower loop, east side of the lower loop. And these are all sulfur pots, smells like rotten eggs. With the Yellowstone River off in the distance. That looks like split pea soup cooking down there. Doesn't smell much better than it either for that panoramic matter. Panoramic shot of the Hayden Valley. Unspoiled. Here we are, right over the top of the upper falls as it goes down. Uh, 
that's the best viewpoint of it all, right up there. The rainbow. Gotta love it. One final shot just downstream of the falls. Standing on the edge of the cliff. Going down to the canyon below. A fitting end to a great day. Well, it's 10 minutes to 7, and uh, we've, we'll have driven 130 miles today on the lower loop. And what a day it was. We saw a lot more today, a lot more stops than we had yesterday. And uh, considering that as we left the Old Faithful Inn, we'd only driven 36 miles for the day, we put on a lot of miles in the afternoon, late afternoon, <clears throat> and into the evening. So, Buddy and Elena are both zonked. They're exhausted. I uh, don't know what we're going to do for dinner tonight. Maybe something quick and easy. Maybe we'll go out. We'll see. Play it by ear when we get to town. We should be back at the trailer in about 20 minutes. It'll be about uh, 10, 7, 15 local time. And uh, we'll have a lot of video to post. And uh, don't know if I'll get it all posted today. Uh, we'll post it as quickly as we can. Good morning. Around the block West Yellowstone Spring Wildlife Tour. Uh, you just heard what we're taking today uh, on Around the Block West Yellowstone uh, Area Tour. About a 65 to 70 mile uh, loop outside of the boundaries of the park. It's uh, Friday, June the 8th, day 11 of our trip. And it's 11 o'clock straight up, our usual time for departure. And uh, we're taking it a little easier today <clears throat> after uh, a, a fast and furious uh, two days uh, circling around Yellowstone. Weather is a chance of showers today, and it's gonna be even a greater chance of showers tomorrow, and rain slash snow showers on Sunday. That's what the forecast says, at least. But we're gonna take this around the loop tour, hoping to see some more wildlife of various types. And uh, if we see something interesting, we'll stop and take a few uh, pictures and feed a film. Okay, we're on uh, US Highway 287, heading west on our way to uh, Higbin Lake. And uh, I'm just taking a panoramic shot of the snow-capped mountains. I think that's Higbin Lake in front of us, and then that uh, mound over there, that kind of steady plateau, is of course Yellowstone. Very uh, lightly traveled road, and uh, the weather could be a little bit better, but we'll take There's it. another panoramic shot of Hebgen Lake, with the mountains in the background, really beautiful country. A lot of uh, nice homes out here too. There's a couple of real nice ones on the other side of the shore. We just thought we'd stop and take a picture of all the We're scenery. We're taking a trail towards Refuge Point that has an overlook over the lake. Um, and we figured we got time to kill, why not? So. We're out uh, already about a half a mile off the road and uh, out into the wilderness. Well, here's the last marker on the Refuge Point Trail. <clears throat> we're not there yet and we don't see any other markers and we're not going to take a chance that we're going to get lost out here. So we'll stop here and just take a pan shot of the beauty of the Montana wilderness. You can hear the river little rapids flowing in the background. Elena down there. Kind of like the sound of music almost in the Alps. So there's the full 360. We're going to head back to the truck and continue our Hopefully tour. Hopefully you can see way off in the distance there 
abandoned houses. Back in the late 50s there was a big earthquake here, 7.5 magnitude, and it sunk that valley by quite a few feet and all the homes subsequently flooded and the residents here had to be airlifted out. That's why it's called Rescue Point. So just as a minor point of education. Well this is Beaver Creek and Elena was hoping she was hoping she would see a beaver uh, but I don't think she's gonna see one. The closest thing she's gonna get to it is a picture of a beaver dam out in the distance. We haven't seen much wildlife. I think it's the wrong time of day for us to be seeing much wildlife. We're by the side of uh, Quake Lake seeing a little animal with a bushy tail. The body of the beaver. Elena thinks it's a beaver, but beavers don't have bushy tails. No way beavers have bushy tails. Anyhow, enough of the animal. This is Quake Lake formed in 1959 by that big earthquake. That's why all these trees are petrified and submerged. Elena says the thing was looking at us, but not anymore. Buddy's going crazy. Um, so this is a relatively new lake. And Elena is obsessed with the, with the beaver. And Buddy is saying, come back here. You guys left me alone okay, in the we car. We just stopped for lunch. It's a little after 1 o'clock at the junction of uh, Highway 287 and Montana Highway 87, I believe. And uh, now I understand why they call it Big Sky Country in Montana. What scenery. And the clouds actually, I think, help to enhance the beauty of it. You could hear the roaring river in the background. There's a few houses out here, cabin type houses. Beautiful mountains in the background. A few other people are here having lunch. And there you have it. Now we're going to go and chow down on a sandwich. So what do you think of the trip so far? Huh? What do you think of the trip so far? Fine. Did I wouldn't be videotaped. You're not being videotaped. I'd be videotaped. <laughs> well, good evening from West Yellowstone. It's a little bit after 8 o'clock. Elena and I just came back. We went into town and had pizza for dinner. <clears throat> Food was okay for up here in, you know, mountain man country. There's a steady rain falling. Uh, pittering, pattering on the roof of the trailer. And as I'm talking to you here, Elena's in the bedroom staring at me. Rolling shake, her eyes. Rolling her eyes, sh shaking her head, doesn't understand why I do this. You know, she thinks I'm totally nuts. But anyhow, years from now, sh she'll enjoy this. And that she wants more exciting narration. I don't know what to say about that. I can, I can only do what I can do. Anyhow, as you saw, we... Uh, had a pretty low-key day here. <clears throat> Did not go into the park at all today. Uh, took about a 65 mile loop um, around <clears throat> the western area of the park. West Yellowstone, uh, West Yellowstone the uh, Grand Tour. Around the block tour, as Elena is correcting me. And <clears throat> we saw parts of Montana where we went back into Idaho for a little bit really pretty country out there and houses are very far apart and they're uh, they all have most of them have green roofs and they remind me of Lincoln log houses from when you're a kid when you had Lincoln logs um, very pretty some of them run on the waterfront or on hills overlooking valleys we took a mile and a half hike uh, you saw part of that we didn't make it all the way to the lookout but it was nice to be you know uh, out in the wilderness a little bit. Buddy sure enjoyed it. Uh, he was in full terrier mode uh, pu pulling us the whole way. <laughs> so uh, in terms of tomorrow the weather is supposed to continue to be wet uh, for tomorrow and we don't think we're gonna go into the park tomorrow either. Uh, there is a bear uh, museum here that actually is like a zoo 
uh, they have live bears uh, on display and Elena wants to see that and she wants to see the wolves um, and since she didn't get a chance to see any in the wild uh, she wants to go see them in these exhibits so we're definitely going to do that tomorrow probably going to do some housekeeping around here do some laundry and I have to uh, get things ready for our trip to uh, Moran Wyoming tomorrow or excuse me on Sunday uh, and then we'll spend a few days at Grand Teton National Park and we'll go into Jackson Wyoming as well so that's it here from uh, rainy uh, West Yellowstone but the temperature at least is moderate. I'd say it's maybe in the upper 50s. And the town is starting to fill up. Uh, a lot of cars in town today. First time we've seen that since we've been here in, uh, on Tuesday. More kids as well. So school is letting out. And the crowds are coming. And that's our cue to leave and get the hell out of here. So anyhow, with that, uh, we will talk to you again tomorrow. Adios.